Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dental Today podcast. We are excited to bring somebody very special, another special guest. Uh, we're talking about somebody that's been in the dental industry for over 15 years, uh, but specifically in the dental lab side of the industry for a little over a year. Amazing story. We are talking about Mrs. Jill Swafford. Jill, welcome to the show. Hey, Hezekiah. Hey, everyone. How are y'all? We are fantastic and eager to hear your story, at least I am. When I was uh, here on your website, uh, checking out your, your bio, which, by the way, I love your website, uh-huh. uh, I, I realized that uh, you haven't been a dental technician for 15 years. That's it. <laughs> you were doing other things within the dental uh, uh, industry, but it's only been a year a little over a year that you've been in the dental industry side of the business, yet in February in LMT Chicago, uh, 2019, you did speak. So I, I'd like for you to marry all these things that are all over the place for me, put them in a way that I can understand them, and uh, and our listeners can be inspired by the way that I've been inspired just by reading your bio just just a little bit. So. Where did you start in the dental industry? So I was 18 years old and senior in high school playing basketball and I blew my foot out. And honest to goodness, my pastor came to me and he was like, you want a part time job? I'm like, Sure. You know, I have nothing else to do. So and it was at our local dentist office. You know, I had 60 kids in my high school. We're really small town. We're in the middle of nowhere. And um, so it was just our local dental office, very old school. We were still hand dipping Um, (laughs) x-rays. So it was it was crazy. So that's where I started. And I never left. I really fell in love with dentistry, loved the patient care, loved the interaction, loved that every day was different. Um, You never knew what was going to walk in and be on the schedule. And so little did I know that was going to be the rest of my career. But it was. I just, I never had had an interest, never looked at dental before. But once I got in there, you couldn't get me out if you tried. (laughs) Yeah. So that's where it all started. And then just progression. You know, I mean, honest to goodness, I look back over my career and I'm like, oh my gosh, God was opening and closing doors long before I knew what was going on. And to the point of when we finished in the dental career 15 you know last year it had been 14 15 years and um i just wanted something different i was commuting an hour a day which was fine until we had kids and once we had kids that commute was not working anymore <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, and so i couldn't bring the dental office to me um i couldn't relocate a dental office that i didn't own and so I started looking. We were having some issues with some crowns that we were trying to feed. We had got a new doctor, and I was quite certain it was our fault that we were having issues. Hmm. But when we reached out to the lab, we could not get a call back. Hmm. And I started turning, and I, I started finding out how crowns were fabricated now. And, I mean, it just one thing led to another, and we opened in a lab. <laughs> wow. But uh, it, while you were... Uh, in the dental office, you also got into management as well. So you weren't uh, you weren't just uh, clocking in, clocking out. You, you were a little more invested into what was going on in the dental clinic, correct? For sure. We the when I left my last office that we were I was with, we had five locations. So we were a bigger market for our area, and um, the offices that I was in, we would have anywhere from twelve to twenty five. 23 girls, three doctors. Um, we had an endodontist in house. You know, we we did a lot of things in house, orthodontist in house. And so, really, I mean, that office, our, we didn't have associates that owned, they were employees of our company. And so, each one of the managers that had their own, you know, office, that we had a team that surrounded us and doctors that went with us. And 
So that was a great part of my background that has really allowed me to stretch and to see vision and to understand goals. And that it's really helped me in the long run already or in the short game so far, but to plan for the long run and the success of the lab. Wow. So uh, you did mention that you were having a few challenges uh, when it came to receiving the uh the 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 result the manufactured result from the laboratory and that's what sparked the interest to get involved in the dental lab side but uh having an interest and actually executing on those interests are two completely different things uh and so we're talking about being in a clinic uh and uh working in a lab totally two different situations Yes. What led you to finally uh, make the transition in closing one chapter in your career and, and uh, uh, opening another chapter and facing a lot of, um, let's just say, uh, unknowns? Yeah. Um, well, for me, honest, honestly, Hezekiah, like, I did not realize how different it was going to be. I mean, mm. I didn't have CERC technology in the offices that I was currently working in or anything, and I had never fabricated a crown before besides temporaries. I mean, I'd made tons of temporaries. But, you know, in my mind, I thought it would be a much smoother transition than it was, which was a surprise for me. Uh, I won't lie. However, having the dental background was a huge, huge leg up. But it is a completely different language on the lab side. One, I was not, I had not taken lessons in. And so, you know, I talked to my husband about it. And, you know, we were having the trouble and I don't know what happened. Somebody's doing something here. Somebody's calling me at the same time, I think. Has it got? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. Sure, sure. Call from my name. <laughs> I'm a Okay, are you still there, Hezekiah? I'm here. Okay, so let me click back to where I can see you. Okay, there you are. Sorry about that. No, you're good. You're um, good. So I'm going to rewind. Just mm -hmm. right here. Um, so I, I really thought that it would be so much more similar. And as much as we're, we're all talking about teeth, we're talking about a lot of different things on the two different sides. And so... I just assumed it would be a lot simpler than it was, and that was the surprise. But I went to my husband, and I was like, you know, honey, this is something that has a really small footprint. Um, the lab industry, you can get started in the lab industry with a very small square footage. It does not take a lot of space anymore, especially if you're going digital. And so I had researched that and knew how often I felt neglected by our lab. Mm. And I knew how important customer service and how I was going to make that a top priority. Like that was what was going to set me apart. I knew I couldn't walk in and say, my crowns are going to be better than theirs. I've got so much more experience. That could not be what I was selling to the doctors because I, I couldn't say that honestly. As much as I knew I was going to give them great quality, I couldn't talk about how long I had been doing that. But what I could stand for and could talk about was customer service and training and offering the support that oftentimes in the offices, we feel like we're missing. Hmm. So that was what started it. And I started looking at a couple of different offices that labs that let me come in and shadow. And so I shadowed for a couple of days. Michael Smith has been like the best mentor on the whole planet. Um, you know Michael Smith, you know how lucky I am that he is 15 minutes away from my house. And he's just been phenomenal. And um, so I shadowed at his office for a couple of days and then it was like, yeah, this is what we want to do. And we went out on the trek to get started. Wow, wow. How, how amazing uh, it is to hear you uh, mention that you, you spoke with your husband, you were both on the same page to get it moving. I believe the uh, the people that we have on our team when it comes to business is very, very important. However, I believe that the most important team member 
uh, in our life is certainly our life partner, uh, which that's that's so so amazing, so amazing to to, to hear that. Now, uh, you you shadowed for a couple of days, and then you decided to jump in here. But where did you learn about the crown and about all this to to start? Yeah. Your business? Because one thing is to buy the equipment, and the other thing is, what am I doing with, with all of this? So, uh, what, what was your process there? Um, well, after we, literally a couple of days, and I was like, okay, I, I want to do this. I know that my work ethic is there. And honest to goodness, I mean, that's, I'm speaking at a marketing summit for Dent Supply here in a couple of weeks, and, or next week, actually. And that's our topic next week is, why your want to has to be bigger than your know-how. And that line, Hezekiah, is the only way we made it. Like, this is what I will eventually retire doing. This is what will provide for our family. I don't want my husband working in construction for the rest of his life. And he owns his own construction company. But I've seen our parents do the same thing. And their backs are give out by the time they're 50. And, you know, their quality of life's gone down. And I know how bad I want this lab to succeed. And I know that I'm willing to give it everything I have to make sure it happens. And so that sheer determination <laughs> and willpower was what started it all. And then came the mar the YouTube videos <laughs> and lots <laughs> and lots of it. <laughs> I have spent hours on YouTube. Hours. Oh, yeah. And um you know, just go into all the summits. That there's so many great products out there. I, I'm not here to say that Dent Supply is hands down the best product on the entire market and the only one to go with. And there's great products everywhere you go. However, with me personally, I'm a person who interacts with people. I I like to talk to my peers. I like to learn from my peers. Um, I want to have mentors that have been there, done that, that can help me along. This is the family that gave that to me. Mm -hmm. Dent Supply, the family of N Lab have been outstanding. And I mean, when people ask me, well, how did you learn to, to do this? Or how did you learn to do a digital wax up? Or how did you, well, you just call Bill or Michael or Jay or Frankie or Trey or you know, you, the Heslips, you call, um, there, there's so many that you can't even mention them all. You had Kevin on the other day. Kevin's been a great supporter for me, him and Jesus and Bill. And I mean, in just such a short period of time, I felt like I had an entire family cheering for me. Wow. For me, that goes a long way. We're competitors in the same market, yet they are cheering me on and want to see me succeed and are there to answer every question that I have. So. Honestly, I used the resources that I was given between, you know, Facebook in lab study group with the YouTube channels and mm -hmm. summit, any summit I could go to. And I was sitting at the table with the people that I felt like had the most knowledge because that's who I want to learn from. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew they had already made the mistakes that I was going to make and I wanted to know how to avoid them <laughs> at that's all. So it's interesting that I, I hear you uh, share how you you uh, relied on the resources to lead the way, uh, but not once did I hear you boast about coming from a background of entrepreneurs or your parents owning businesses or your, your husband's parents owning businesses, although he owns his own business and you have your own business, but I didn't hear you boast once about that and you what i'm taking from from this is that uh and correct me if i'm wrong but it sounds to me like your key to success was having a learning desire uh youtube it costs zero yes yes asking someone a question costs zero yeah. and uh, that's that's so amazing because i believe that whenever we we uh, have a desire to accomplish something, I believe the first things when we are uh, trained a particular way, a particular way to think, the first things that will come to our mind are the excuses. But here we have uh, a young lady who 
was on the other side of the industry, decides to come in to the uh, dental lab side of the industry with uh, very little knowledge of the lab industry and is killing it. You, you, you spoke in February. Now you're going to be speaking again in Charlotte. Am I correct? I am. I am. It's just been a, a really crazy ride the last year and a half. And, you know, some of the things that I feel like have have helped us to get to the points that we're at now have been one being willing to listen even when it's advice I don't want to hear <laughs> um, you know some of the best advice I got was to do something called outsourcing which <laughs> in my mind was the worst thing ever but in reality it was what I needed to do at that time mm. and I had peers that were willing to, to tell me those things before I lost clients and you know those were those were huge and you know so being able to listen to those that advice even if it wasn't what i wanted <laughs> and just honestly being willing this is a tough one to say but being willing to be vulnerable as a woman in this industry i did not realize how much um how, how much outnumbered i was going to be and that's fine with me. I don't mind it. Um, there's plenty of fantastic women in our industry. There's a lot of them. Very, very talented. Um, you know, and sometimes it's hard when you feel so outnumbered to put yourself out there and to show your work and to be willing to accept the criticism that comes with the work that you show. <laughs> but that is your best learning tool. You know, and to raise your hand and to ask the question that everybody else in the room is probably thinking, but we're all just too embarrassed, I guess, to ask. And, you know, so really being able to be vulnerable and to put myself out there to not know it all and admit that I, I need help. <laughs> you know, that's hard because you want to be taken seriously and you don't want to be looked at as the newbie that doesn't know and she's just out here trying to wing it. I did not want to wing it. That was not the plan, you know? And so I think those were the two biggest things was vulnerability was, was huge and humility was a big pill to swallow. Mm. So, I don't know. It was scary, you know? But, and uh, you, you did mention that uh, there is a uh, number disparity. Obviously we find that there are more dental hygienists and dental assistants that can be uh, ladies, right? And then in the in yeah. the lab, where you know now with everything going digital, it's a different a different situation. But back in the day, uh, and there are still, of course, a few labs here and there that when you walk in there and it's 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 a mess. You know, I mean, it's there's there's uh, alginate all over the floor, and you know, it's crazy, right? But now it's been it's 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 uh, being cleaned up with with the uh, um, with the digital revolution within dentistry. And, and uh, I, I do find that uh, the support, uh, regardless of whether you're a newbie or whether you're, you're a lady or new into the industry, it's, it's amazing amongst dental technicians. And as you mentioned, uh, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, uh, it, it, it connects with something that Elvin Santos uh, shared with me, which I had him on uh, one of the earlier episodes on the show. He said that uh, one of his uh, exponential or one of the catalysts that contributed to his exponential growth was putting his work out there for people to Absolutely. criticize it. And, uh, and it goes back to what you're saying, asking the questions and, and putting yourself out there uh, in the spotlight so that um, there's no filter. You can't hide behind anything and people will tell you. But the beautiful thing that I've found is that this industry is so loving and so supportive and yeah. um, it's, it, it's powerful. Now, uh, I did, and I want to go back to this because this, this, this called my, my, my uh, attention here. Um, your website, I, I, I clicked on your website uh, directly from Facebook. And it leads me to this wonderful landing page and, and I'm clicking on the different menus and I see pictures of you and, and the babies and your husband. It's, it's, it's gorgeous, right? But I don't see any teeth there. I'm like, what, what is happening here, right? They're, they're, she's not marketing what she does. But then as I'm speaking with you, I realize 
that uh, you're you're not uh, you're the people that work with you know the quality that you render. Yet you are showing. Uh, this is what I'm taking from it. You are showing them that you are giving them who you are. What, where did this whole idea of not putting anything having to do with teeth on your website come from? Or did it just happen organically? And no, no. We so originally I I wanted to have something about teeth on there, you know. But then I realized I had nothing to put on there about teeth. You know, I I didn't have any seated photos, and I didn't have this, and I didn't have that. And so as I was building the website, I just kind of started falling in love with that. And now that I have those kind of photos and things, I choose to use them in like Instagram and um, some of that top marketing. But I really still kind of like having our website the way that it is because, you know, for me as as a consumer, you know, I, yes, I do like to see the product and I, I do like those kind of things. But as for myself as a consumer, I really love the stories behind the things that I'm I'm purchasing and the the companies that I'm supporting. And, you know, so honestly, that's the doctors that I want to work with are our doctors and offices that understand that there's a person behind the brush and that we are a huge part of the finished product that they started. It takes both of us. And I wouldn't want to hire an employee if I didn't know a lot about them, or especially an associate. If I'm a business owner looking to hire an associate, I want to know who that person is. And so that's kind of where we've stayed, and and that we just kind of like it there. <laughs> so it happened organically. That is that is so awesome. I I believe that uh, just by hearing uh, your 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 progression within the dental laboratory. Uh, industry and how you've uh, you've grown in it uh, in in a little over a year. It just uh, lets us know that uh, the desire that's there will push through. I mean, I, I would have never, um, I would have, I wouldn't have known this was a dental laboratory's website, right? Yeah. But um, but it's like you said, it's not about that, and it's. Um, it's awesome. Let me ask you this. You're going to be in, in, in uh, Charlotte in next weekend, correct? Uh, yeah. Well, give us a little bit of, of, of the details on that for our listeners, those that are in the area. Yeah, so Charlotte is going to be our in-lab marketing summit, which I've been to, I think, every summit that they've had since last January, except the full mouth rehab, just because I was not ready for that. Um, but these summits are amazing. If you are at all have the opportunity to go to these things, you're talking when you register early bird, it's ninety five dollars for two days. And there's I think we have twenty seven different twenty seven to forty somewhere around there different courses that you can take throughout those two days. And I tell everybody this so often. The courses are fantastic. You are dealing with some amazing speakers that I feel completely humbled to share stages with and to put my power up PowerPoint up after theirs or before theirs. And, you know, there are just some amazing technicians that are so passionate about what they do. And that alone is worth the $95 or the 130 or whatever it may go up to at the end. But the networking that you get at these summits is invaluable. And I do not say that lightly. I say that with every ounce of honesty. You you sit down with people that, you know, have a lab 30 times your size or a lab a third of your size. And you hear all these different pros and cons of different. Jill, can you hear me? So sorry. No, it's perfectly fine. I'm so you sorry. I saying that. Far. No, okay. it's perfectly fine. So you were saying that you, that you uh, thirty times or a third of your size, and you hear all these things, and that, that's where it cut off. So yeah. So I mean, you know, you're dealing with labs that are much larger than yours, or much smaller than yours, or right along the same. 
and you're you're learning about what they do in employee issues or team member issues and materials and and oh my gosh just the little clicks of the mouse that make such a big difference or the glaze that they're you it is so worth it and i have met so many great great people that are not speakers they're not necessarily the ones on the stage but they are some people that i have really grown to love and appreciate and look forward to seeing things that they post in their progress and that's one of the things that I really get out of these summits is watching people grow. This industry is ever changing. I mean, mm. every day there's something new coming out. There's a new printer. There's a new material to print with. Now we're doing dentures and now we're doing this. And it, it's changing and evolving every day. So when these summits are, you know, three to six months apart, it's amazing what people can do in that amount of time oh. and where they can grow and progress and it is just so exciting. And if you're if you are a dental technician whose passion has kind of you need it reignited or you've kind of fizzled out or you're stuck and you're trying to decide if you're going to stay in the lab industry and, and do the digital push or are you going to start doing digital dentures or are you, this is where you need to be. Mm. This is what reignites our passion for for what we do. And when it gets to the point that you're just struggling, this is where it sets you on fire again. Mm. And, you know, anybody that's willing to come, I mean, I'd love to see you guys there. And it's, it's September 20th and 21st. It's there in Charlotte at the, the Denzel Plasterona Academy, which is gorgeous. If you've not seen it, it is amazing. And um, just a whole group of speakers. I'm super excited about our keynote is the Ritz Carlton. And as we have heard already in this, I'm all about some customer service. So I'm very excited about the top notch people that they bring in for us to, to learn from and at such an affordable rate. It's crazy. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I'm so excited to hear that. I, I was speaking with uh, Bart Cawthorn a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago, and he did share that he's going to be speaking as well. Uh, I won't be able to be there, but I am. Uh, I am excited to to hear all the good news and and everything that uh, that that's going to transpire there. Um, and Bart, by the way, was another gentleman who spoke to me about. You. He said, "You've got to speak to this young lady." Like, man, uh-huh. Bart is sending the best of the best over. <laughs> Bart is fantastic. He's been another one of my great mentors, and he's a true encourager. And, and that's yes, something yes, he is. He's a seasoned, experienced, fantastic technician who ha- was a lab owner at one point itself and was ready to step away. And, and that's a great story in itself, you know, listening to his story and seeing how this new dentistry reignited his passion. Mm-hmm. And he's just always there to just encourage you. And that, that's been something that's just been so welcoming in this community is people that are just always pushing you to just try it and go for it and you know don't be scared and you know so that's been a big big support for us so i'm really excited to have all the people on our team that we have i feel like it's not just me and my team i have a team all over the country and all over the world then we can connect through facebook instagram Mm -hmm. and, and we grow together and i say we because i mean i i i get to meet a a phenomenal professional dental uh, professionals all over, and I learn as well. Uh, but for our listeners that are interested in following you, have been inspired by your story, want to follow you, want to connect with you, uh, besides your website, which we will be having uh, in the description of the video or the podcast that, that our listeners are watching, where can they follow you on Instagram, on Facebook? Let us know. Yeah, so we have um, Oaks Dental Designs, is, um, and that's a plural, so Oaks Dental Designs. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. Also, Oaks Coaching is another facet of what we do. Um, you know, because of the management background, I, I miss that side of it. And so that is one part that I'm super excited to be able to kind of reignite that part of it and be able to go into offices and labs and, and really just re-spark their energy and push them to really go past if you're at a stale point. So Oaks Coaching, you can follow us on both of those handles on instagram um ladies of the meal so i i didn't even think about this till just now but i should probably say this christina will kill me if i don't 
<laughs> but Ladies of the Meal is a group that we started. Christina Heslip and I started this um, about, gosh, about four months ago, I guess now. And it is a, an, a group page on Facebook that is strictly intended for ladies in the dental tech industry. Um, and it has been phenomenal to see the response to that and um, just having a place for them to come. Just like I said earlier, sometimes it's intimidating, you know, as a female in the industry because we are a little bit outnumbered. And so, you know, it's intimidating to put your stuff out there. But just seeing these ladies share their work, oh, my gosh, they're talented. And so if you are a female in the lab industry, please follow us and, and request to join the group. Um, we would love to have you have your input. Um, we, we do little things. We had a wine and shine in Colorado when we went out there and got together and just got to meet up with everybody, which was so nice. Um, we really try to stay away from the activity times of any of our summits just because we think it's so important to, to be able to be part of the family that we do try to find a time just to kind of step away and just say, hey, and, you know, I'm another mom working at a bench trying to pay the bills and get that crown out on time. So let's relate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, ladies that and meal, is Oak awesome. Designs and Oaks Coaching. That's us. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure pleasure having Mrs. Jill Jillian Swafford, right? We call you Jill Swafford, right? We're excited. We hope to see you in Chicago uh, this uh, upcoming February. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mrs. Jill Swafford, make sure you follow her on Instagram, both of her Instagram handles uh, on her website. Make sure if you're a lady, make sure you're part of that group. And we look forward to hearing from you very, very soon. Jill. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Hezekiah, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And thanks for thinking of us and letting us be part of this. It's a great drone community. Pleasure is all on up. We will see you next time, folks.